for this session, we will talk about your additions to tax. So uh, in the previous sessions, we already talked about the uh, tax administration of the VAR that is to assess and collect. Also, we already talked about your compliances as to when to file a particular tax and uh, what particular form, the due date, etc. So now, after knowing that you have a basic tax, generally, you have an addition to tax. So here, we will talk about what are those additions to tax. So again, we have a basic tax, and then we add additions to tax. So what we need to learn are the items on your additions to tax to get for your total tax due. So let's start it. So your tax due is computed this way. So again, we have here your basic tax due. And from your basic tax due, we add your additions to tax. So this additions to tax generally is also known as your civil penalties. It's also known as your civil penalties. So we have here surcharge, interest, and your compromise. Your surcharge as a rule is either 25% or 50%, while your interest is 12%. And your compromise is a penalty. Take note of this. Uh, when we say additions to tax, additions to tax, when we say compromise, it is a penalty. But when we say as a uh, as part of the taxing power or the power of the CIR, that is to compromise tax liabilities. Okay, so we have here one compromise, which is in the form of a penalty. This is a civil penalty. But when we say the power of the CIR to compromise, that is the compromise of tax liability, that is to lessen the tax liability at a certain amount. And we already have learned how to compromise a tax liability in our previous sessions. So uh, do not interchange this compromise as a basic penalty or an addition to tax to the compromise of tax liability. So again, the additions to tax are your surcharge, interest, and your compromise. Surcharge is 25% or 50%. Interest is 12% and compromise is in the form of a penalty. There is a table for your compromise penalties. Now, let's start first with interest. Interest can either be a deficiency or delinquency interest. So what is a deficiency interest? A deficiency interest is an interest on the deficient on your tax due. So when we say deficiency, the uh, tax due versus the tax payment is not the same. So for example, your tax due is 300K. But what is previously paid is only 250000 So you have a deficiency payment amounting to 50000 And this 50000 will be subject to deficiency interest. Okay, So when we say deficiency, there is a lacking as to the amount of the payment based on your total tax due. So your deficiency payment is 12% per annum. And uh, normally, to compute it, the deficient tax, you multiply it to 12%, the number of days or months divided by total number of days or months in a year. So generally, in uh, counting the days, you exclude the first day, but include the last day. So let's say, for example, this is an ITR. Let's say, for example, this is an ITR. So it's an ITR, which is due on April 15, 2022. So uh, ITR for 2021, which is due on April 15, 2022. And you have learned that you have a deficiency of 50,000 and you only paid that on uh, June 10. Okay, You only paid that on June 10. So to compute for our interest, to compute for our interest, we count the number of days from the due date up to June 10. So from April 15, 2022 
to June 10. So to count it, what's left on April 5, uh, April is uh, 15. And then after April, we have May 31 and then June 10. So total these will be 56 days. So uh, to compute for the interest, 50,000 times 12 percent multiplied by um 56 all over 365. So that will be our interest. So the answer there is equal to times 56 all over 365, 920.55 interest. Okay? So that will be our interest. So again, deficiency, uh, there will be an interest on your deficiency if ever the total amount of payment does not correspond the total tax due. How about a delinquency? So when we say delinquency here, there is a failure to pay the amount of tax due to uh, be filed and or there, the amount of the tax due which no return is required to be filed or there is a deficiency tax or any surcharge or interest thereon on the due date appearing in the notice and demand of the CAR, there shall be assessed and collected on the um, unpaid amount 12% per annum until the amount is fully paid. For the leniency, generally, in deficiency, there was a filing. However, the amount of uh, the total payment does not correspond to the tax due. In delinquency, there was no filing. And since there is no filing, then you are subject to interest. So failure to pay or file the amount to be paid on any return. Or on the last one, there is already a due date appearing on the notice or demand of the CIR. So there will be a delinquency interest here. Now let's expound on the third one. So how is that? So there's already an assessment. Okay, there's already an assessment. And based on the assessment, there is already a due date. So let's say, for example, you are assessed. The total assess is, uh, so we have 50K, the basic tax of 50K. And we have a surcharge, let's say, of 25%. So 12,500 interest of uh, 920.55. And let's say your compromise penalty is 10,000. So this is your total tax due already. So 50,000, then we have uh, 12,500. And then we have 920.55 and then 10,000 compromise penalty. So the total tax due is 73,420.55. So that was the assessment. And then based on that assessment, uh, the assessment said that it is due uh, on, on or before August 15, 2022. It is due on or before August 15, 2022. Now, assuming you did not pay on the due date of the assessment, you did not pay on the due date of the assessment, so what will happen? You will be subject to a delinquency interest. So what is that delinquency interest? So based on the total tax due, so 73,420.55, you multiply it again to a 12%, you multiply it again to the number of days all over total number of days. So that will be your total delinquency interest. So that is for number three. Again, what does number three mean? You were previously assessed. So there is already a deficient tax. At the same time, you are already subject to surcharge interest and compromise on that. So this is our example. You are assessed. And based on that assessment, there was already a due date on August 15, 2022. So if ever you were previously assessed and there is a due date, but you were unable to pay on the due date, you will be subject to delinquency. The main question is, what is the delinquency rate here? The delinquency rate here is the total tax due based on the assessment. You multiply to 12% divided by the number of days over the total number of days. So assuming August 15, you only paid on August 31. You only paid on August 31. So from August 15 to August 31, that would be 16 days over 365. So how much is our interest? So how much is our interest? So times 12% multiplied by 16 all over 365. Our interest here is 386.21. 
So here, so basic tax of 50K, we have surcharge of 12,500. Our interest is 920.55. Our compromise is 10,000. Compromise, generally, this is given. This is given. So what you will compute is the surcharge and the interest. So we said surcharge is 25% interest we have computed a while back. And then uh, your total tax due there is 73,420.55. Now, based on the tax due on your assessment, you will add additional delinquency interest of 386.21. So your total tax due now is equal to 73,806.76. Okay, sir, um, question. Will I be still subject to surcharge because I was unable to pay the uh, total tax due on the assessment? No, not anymore. You will only be subject to delinquency interest. So uh, this is quite easy to understand. Again, there will be a deficiency interest if the tax due is not equal to your payment. The delinquency happens if ever you have failed to pay. What did you fail to pay? You failed to pay the tax due on your return or you did not file your return. At the same time, you failed to pay the deficiency tax based on an assessment. So that's number three. So again, deficiency happens when the tax due is not equal to your payment. Delinquency happens if ever you failed to pay the tax due on a particular return because you did not file the return. Uh, the second one, you failed to pay the tax due on an assessment. So that's the uh, number three. So number one and two, failed to pay the tax return. Number three, failed to pay the assessment. And if ever you failed to pay the assessment, how do you compute it? You compute it based on the tax due. You multiply it to the percentage and the number of days all over the total number of days. Take note. The basis here is the total tax due. Unlike in deficiency, in deficiency, uh, the basis is basic tax. Here in delinquency, the basis of number three will be the tax due per assessment. Tax due per assessment. Okay, I'll just write it here. So again, we have here delinquency, right? The basis is basic tax. For deficiency, deficiency can either be failure to pay because you failed to file or failure to pay the assessment. If failure to pay because you failed to file, your basis is still basic tax. But failure to pay due to assessment, your basis, your basis will be the tax due per assessment, okay? Tax due per assessment. You multiply it to 12% over, uh, multiply it over the period. So uh, there is not much of a problem here as long as you know what you are subjecting to interest. So do not forget, it could be delinquency or it could be also deficiency. Now let's go to your surcharge. For surcharge, it could be a simple neglect or willful neglect. For simple neglect, that is failure to file any return and pay the tax due there on. So for example, your income tax return, it is due uh, April 15. You failed to file that and you failed to pay. That is considered a simple neglect. If the return is not filed with the proper internal revenue officer, so let's say, for example, you are registered in RDO Baguio, but you paid your tax in RDO Tuigarao, then you are subject to surcharge. Another one, if you fail to pay the deficiency tax shown in the notice of assessment, so for example, the notice of assessment earlier, uh, 50K, you will be subject to a surcharge of 25%. And then we have your failure to pay the full or part of the amount of the tax shown in any return. So let's say the total return tax due is 100K, but you only paid 70K, then you will still be subject to simple neglect uh, or no, 80,000, let's say. In, a form, uh, in the amendment of a return where an additional tax is uh, subject, wherein you will still pay an additional tax, there will be a 25% tax. Okay, ingat tayo dito sa number 5. 
Why? Because under number five, there will there is a new ruling. There is new memorandum circular with this, uh, which we will discuss later. Next, for willful neglect, you file you have willful neglect to file the return on time, or there is a false or fraudulent return, false or fraudulent return, or willful neglect. What is easy here is you just determine what are the two types of neglect, simple and willful. And under willful, that is either willful or false or fraudulent return. So if ever, memorize na yung dalawa ng willful neglect. Kung hindi siya doon, edi simple neglect siya. Ganun lang. And uh, simple neglect is 25%, while willful neglect is 50%. Again, so there are two types of surcharge that can be simple neglect or willful neglect. You memorize the willful neglect because that is either willful or false or fraudulent. Now, if not, then it is only a simple neglect. Simple neglect is 25%. Willful neglect is 50%. So here, basic tax, you multiply to the surcharge. And sir, when can we say that it is a false or fraudulent return? It is a false or fraudulent return if ever there is, uh, this is a primi, prima facie evidence, if your sales receipts or income exceeds 30% of that declared per return or the claim of deductions exceeds 30% of the actual deductions. So your threshold here is 30% of sales receipts or income or 30% of your deductions. If ever it is any of this, then it is considered as a willful neglect. So if it's not false or fraudulent, not willful, simple neglect. Willful neglect, 50%. Simple neglect, 25%. Ingatan yung number 5 sa simple neglect. Bakit? May bago tayong ruling dyan. So let's look into that ruling. So what is the rule on your amended returns? Earlier, you have learned that if you amend the return, it is subject to 25% if there's an additional tax. However, what is the rule per RMC 43-2022? So that's the new RMC that I'm talking about earlier. So if ever it is on or before due date, if subsequently amended, there will be no surcharge. Ay, ayan. Pag nag-file ka daw on or before due date, tapos in amend mo may additional tax ka, then there will be no surcharge. So for example, um, ITR mo nung 2021, ITR mo nung 2021, finhile mo nung um, April 10, 2022. Is it within the due date? Yes. Now, nag-amend ka. Nag-amend ka nung May 15, 2022. Is it subject to surcharge? The answer is no surcharge. Why? Because you filed on or before the due date. But what if you filed after the due date? If you filed after the due date, you have now a surcharge you will be subject to surcharge. Okay? So, ingatan nyo yan. Ha? Again, RMC number 43-2022. If ever you filed on or before due date, no surcharge. After due date, subject to surcharge. That's the rule. On amended returns. You will amend. Subsequently, there is additional tax. You will be subject to surcharge if you uh, filed it after the due date. So, let's take a look into this example. Naruto Corporation has a basic income tax of 500k for the calendar year 2021. However, after the external auditor finished auditing the corporation's financial statements, the taxable income increased resulting in a tax due of 600k. So, meron siyang deficiency na 100k. Now, ang tanong, kailan natin uh, is subject siya sa surcharge? So, the company amended the return on uh, June 2. So for year 2021, the filing must be on or before on or before uh, April 15, 2022. Now, in our example on the first assumption, assumption 1, okay? In your assumption 1, it was filed on April 10, 2022. If filed on April 10, 2022, therefore, will it be subject to surcharge? 
So we have basic tax deficiency of 100,000, right? It is, is it subject to surcharge? Your answer is no, zero. Why? Because it is filed on or before the due date, okay? This is filed on or before due date. Therefore, no surcharge. Is it subject to interest? Yes. Compromise penalty? Yes. Sabi sa problem, 15K. But there is no surcharge. Are we clear? There is no surcharge in the first one. How about in your assumption 2? How about in assumption 2? So, you filed on May 15. You filed on May 15. Question, is that on or before due date? That is your question, right? If the answer is no, then there is a surcharge. Since uh, it is filed after the due date, so after, uh, if ever filed after, there is surcharge. If on or before, no surcharge. This is about amendment. If there's an amendment, okay? Take note, if only there is an amendment. So here, there will be a basic tax of 100,000 surcharge. The answer is yes, 25%. So that is 25K. There will be an interest. You compute the interest and then you add the compromise of 15,000. That is now the total tax due. So see the difference again? If ever uh, you amend it on or before the due date, uh, you filed it on or before the due date, you amend it thereafter, no surcharge. You filed it after the due date, you amend it again thereafter, there will be a surcharge. That's for surcharge. Now we go to your compromise penalty. What is a compromise penalty? A compromise penalty is imposed for each failure to file an information return statement or lease. So uh, on our previous discussion, we have said that you must file. As long as it is within your BIR form 2303, you must file. So if you did not file within those dates, you are subject to penalty. And your compromise penalty is that it is a tabular schedule of your different penalties depending on your tax due or depending on what is your um, infraction. So these amounts are collected by BIR in lieu of criminal prosecution. This is a compromise penalty. So let's uh, recap everything. So we started with knowing the basic tax. Okay? After that, you add on the basic tax the interest. And we said interest can either be deficiency if the tax due is not equal to the amount paid and delinquency if ever there is non-filing or non-payment or non-payment of assessment. Now, what is our computation here? Basic tax multiplied by rate multiplied by period. Here, uh, on the second one, basic tax multiplied by rate multiplied by period. How about the last one? It is the tax due per the assessment notice multiplied, multiplied by rate multiplied by period. Do not forget that you will only add a delinquency tax on the third issue, the non-payment of assessment, based on tax due. After that, we have your surcharge. Okay, so for surcharge, it's either simple neglect or willful neglect. Willful neglect, it is really willful or it is false or fraudulent. What is the prima facie uh, case that it is considered false or fraudulent? 30% under declaration of sales, receipts, or income. 30% over declaration of your deductions or cost of sale. If this is the case, 50%. If not, then 25%. Next, rule on the amendment. Rule on the amendment. If filed on or before, no surcharge. If filed after, there will be surcharge. And then lastly, you add your compromise penalty. That is now your total tax. Okay? That's it for your additions to tax.